now we come to the next set of electromagnetic waves so so we have been going up right so so here we were here so that was the set for the for the microwaves somewhere here gigahertz gigahertz range and above somewhere here we have infrared okay infrared waves are produced by hot bodies hot bodies and molecules okay okay and they are these are readily absorbed these are readily absorbed by 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 water molecules water molecules they are readily absorbed by water molecules apart from that also by co2 and ammonia now if they absorb it what happens <coughs> thus objects containing water have energy of their molecules have increased have gain so objects containing water gain energy by absorption of absorption of infrared and get heated they themselves get heated okay fine <coughs> what are some of the uses you must have seen in in infrared therapy if if someone has got a got say say stiff joints or or swollen muscles then you'll find an orange kind of lamp something like this okay that is used for therapy okay so 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 used for therapy and what kind of therapy why therapy because because if you heat something if you heat heat an injured part or or a or a or a cramped part or a or or a muscular pull what happens the body the muscles become more flexible and have tendency to fall back from where they had been pulled or or uh, or, or or if there was a cramp it, it goes back so so use for therapy so it is that special kind of lamp we can't use anything else for muscle I, i'll i'll come back to that use for therapy for muscular pains and swellings what was your question uh, it is that any special kind of lamp that it is an infrared lamp so it it uh, gives you um, <coughs> waves basically in the infrared region now what happens it is a dull orangish color okay a very very faint orangish color that visible part that reddish part is obviously not infrared the infrared is actually not visible to you so light wise if you find then it is it is very faint but but nevertheless uh, i think they have put in orange or red color so as to understand that it is on otherwise how do you know that it is on right but basically it it consists of the infrared waves so what happens so 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 the swellings so so actually it's nothing nothing great actually after some time you will find that that the affected area that is getting heated if you have if you have uh, focused the light on that okay 
the second very important thing is the the remote controls the remote controls of electronic gadgets use infrared light so so it is not visible to us and still it does the job okay gadgets yes okay have you ever seen what happens inside if if you have if you switch on say say the remote of a dth there, there's a faint there's a faint reddish kind of led that glows mm -hmm. again i i'd like to say that reddish portion that you are able to see is visible light so you so that, that is not what actually does the trick what does the trick is the infrared right so so uh, so remote controls of electronic gadgets use infrared lights by using leds since leds also generate light in the infrared zone now try to understand if we had made it say say some light green light or something then there was every probability that from some filters or for, from some glass panes some green light falls and maybe your tv gets on okay so we wanted a cheap substitute that should not be triggered by any spurious signal correct that is also required otherwise what happens you switch on the lights of your room and the tv goes on okay or maybe maybe someone passes in front of that and the tv goes off so so you do not want these things things to happen so so a cheap, that is a cheap alternative if you look into the remote you can actually see an led actually blinking when you switch it on or increase the volume or change the channel or or whatever okay but, uh, nowadays i don't see a glow in the device normally you do not see the led itself no the led is visible the hmm. bulb is visible but i don't see the light oh, it may be very faint or or gone altogether you can program it to to just emit the infrared this thing okay you cannot go to ultraviolet they they become more energetic you cannot be here could not be here so so infrared is a good alternative another very important thing is the whole mechanism of the warming of the earth okay the earth gets warmed by infrared rays what actually happens is your atmosphere your this is your say atmosphere right this is your earth this is your atmosphere okay now what happens the 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 rays that come from the sun okay the rays that come from the sun they from as the object starts getting heated and more heated the the frequency of the light that it emits becomes higher and higher okay that means the wavelength starts becoming shorter and shorter so what happens from here you get the these short waves and your and your atmosphere is absolutely transparent to it okay so atmosphere is transparent <coughs> to the sun rays <coughs> since they are short waves high frequency due to the high temperature of the sun okay 
Now the earth gets heated. They, they transmit their energy into the molecules of the earth. The earth gets heated and obviously not to the same extent as the sun. So what happens? The earth gets heated to a far lesser extent and emits its own heat waves in the infrared region okay their wavelength since their frequency is quite less than the rays of the sun the electromagnetic waves that we receive from the sun what happens what happens so so you can say we are we are receiving it in visible range not all of them are visible but okay fine a major portion of it is visible fine so so visible is higher frequency you see see they, they are there okay so so this gets heated and and this emits a long wave whose wavelength whose region whose wavelength is longer than whose wavelength is longer than the incoming radiation right now our atmosphere is actually almost opaque to this okay our atmosphere is almost opaque opaque to these infrared waves and reflects it back and reflects it back so it comes back correct the long waves the long waves so so these are the incoming these are the these are the infrared waves okay so they keep on bouncing off the atmosphere and that's how we say that the the atmosphere acts as a blanket which warms you otherwise you go to the moon <coughs> there is no atmosphere what happens the day temperature soar to some say 100 degree centigrade the night temperatures fall down to minus 160 degree centigrade so you can very well understand what will happen to the life if it is subjected to such thermal shocks it just cannot survive okay or or at least not the way we have been seeing because because maybe at 100 120 degree centigrade everything boils over and vaporizes right at least water vaporizes and and that has been considered to be the single single most important source for creation of life okay so when we talk about these missions going on to mars or pluto or here or there in search of life they are not looking for life itself but they are looking for water they are looking for water okay and and now they say that uh, in, in on mars in winters there is a hell lot of water and suddenly it all vaporizes okay so so they have seen huge rivers huge erosions by water so it condenses and and it evaporates right so you never know what what is happening okay and so Huh? So that's why it evaporates, no? The temperature goes uh, very high. So it evaporates from cars, so it's not habitable. Hmm? Evaporates, goes up, then condenses. It has to condense as it goes up, no? It cools. <coughs> so that's why, now, now what happens, 
Now what happens? That's why you will find your hill stations are cooler. Why? Otherwise, technically speaking, you are going nearer the sun. So you should have been getting warmer and warmer. And the sea level should have been the coldest. But the trouble is, as you go higher, the heating is actually from here. Your earth itself is the heater. Though it, it acts as the secondary heater. The primary heater is obviously the sun. So that's why as you go up, the temperature falls. And for every 165 meter rise, the temperature falls down by 1 degree centigrade. Okay? So... So why don't they use infrared instead does, of microwave? Does, just to say, does the earth gets heated <coughs> by the infrared waves generated by, generated by Heating due to the sun. The temperature on, on the earth, okay? The, <coughs> I'm writing it here, the temperature on the earth reduces or decreases, decreases by one degree centigrade for every 165 meter rise in height above the sea level height above the sea level so what happens you go to a so about about 6 degree centigrade per kilometer fall okay so you go to somewhere around 4000 meter and the temperature falls by about 25 degrees centigrade. Okay. You go to some 5000, so it goes down by about 30 degrees centigrade. So even in scorching heat, you have to, you have to take your woolens. Okay. This is the heating mechanism of the earth and this mechanism resembles the greenhouse. So this is known as greenhouse effect. Okay. It is called <coughs> greenhouse greenhouse effect. Greenhouse effect. No? You must have heard a lot about this. So so there are greenhouses. So there are, yes. Below sea level. Two things happen, I'll, I'll tell you. It's called greenhouse effect. There are greenhouse gases. Okay. So methane is one of the greenhouses, house gases. Another very powerful gas is carbon dioxide. Okay. So what are some of the greenhouse gases? Greenhouse gases are greenhouse gases are, are moisture moisture itself is a greenhouse gas co2 this is causing us us quite a lot of discomfort this co2 because we are we are uh, we are throwing away more and more co2 into the atmosphere so more and more heat is getting trapped and that is what is leading to global warming okay so co2 is one ch4 methane Methane is also a, a greenhouse gas CO. and it is, it is uh, CH4, what? CO, CO is uh, not that powerful, but I think it is a greenhouse gas. It is a greenhouse gas, but CO is not, not generated in that huge amount as CO2 is. Methane, so, so what happens? The developing countries point finger towards the developed countries that they are generating a hell lot of CO2. Methane is also generated by standing crops. So the developed countries point finger towards you saying that your crops are also adding to the same amount of greenhouse effect. Okay, and in this blame game, 
the common people 